Good morning and welcome to Hope for the Family with Evangelist Moyo and Sonia Even. God is good all the time. We thank God for keeping us alive to see this new day which He has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The child of victory and rejoicing are heard continuously in the tent of the righteous. We thank God for keeping us alive to see this day which He has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and glorify God for His goodness towards us. As we come before our God this morning, let us rejoice in His presence and know that it's the goodness of God that has kept us to see this day. It's not by anything that we do, for God Himself kept us alive because He has a purpose for us to be alive this day in the name of Jesus. So, as we are alive, we must remember the very important assignment that God has entrusted to each one of us that we must go out to preach the gospel of salvation to the nation. We have received salvation, it's not enough that we have received it and we keep it to ourselves. God wants us to take the good news to everyone around us, to tell them about his plan for the salvation of mankind, of everyone. God created us and he loves us. He loves us so much that while we are sitting as he sent his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us, God still loves us today and he wants everyone to know what his plan is. That he has given us salvation, that life has come to this world through his son Jesus Christ, and that we must repent and turn back to him in the name of Jesus. We read about the verdict from the Bible, I, I do not remember the book we read it from, that it was the book, from, the book of John, that the verdict was that light has come into the world, but that men love darkness, they do not want their deeds to be. Exposed, so they rejected the light because they did not want the light to expose their evil deeds to the world. But those who accepted the light know that their deeds are good, and it is God that has given us the enablement to do good deeds. So we accept the light because we have nothing to hide, we are not ashamed of walking in the light. God has come in the flesh through our Lord Jesus Christ, He has given salvation to the world. He has shown us what darkness is and the evil deeds that are done in darkness. And he has shown us what light is and the good deeds and right good and righteous deeds that are done in the light through the Spirit of God. And God wants us to walk in the light, to embrace this light that he has given to us and for us to walk in the light. If we are children of God, we will listen to what God is saying and we will the obedience to the will of God by allowing God to help us to receive the salvation. It's God Himself that will help us. The Bible says that God has placed a seed of righteousness in each one of us. He has touched our hearts. So we have to be attentive to the voice of God and allow Him to do what He alone can do in our lives. If we are rejecting God's plan for salvation, it means that we are not children of the light and we have nothing to do with God. And we should understand that we are ourselves. We are the ones excluding ourselves from the plan of God. Because if God created us all and He made us in His image and likeness, then God wants us to be like Him. He wants us to come into the light and to walk in the light. Why do we want to turn our back against the God that created us? This day, as we come before God, let us reflect on the things we do, examine our sense of within. If there are ways that we have commit, we have, if there are ways that we have sinned against God, ways that we have turned our back against Him, ways that we have gone astray and we have forgotten why God created us, we do not acknowledge, acknowledge the God that has created us. Let us come back this day and ask God to have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. As we start this new day. We have another opportunity to do things that are right, the righteous for our God. We have another opportunity to turn away from the paths that we are straying on to come back to the righteous path. The Spirit of God is there, instructing us and directing us through life. But we must lead ourselves to the Spirit of God for the Spirit to help us, for the Spirit to direct our course, for the Spirit to help us to do the will of God in this world. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that wisdom cries out. Wisdom is the power through which God created this world. God's wisdom is available for, for us, but if we are not walking in the righteous path, we will not hear 
the voice of reason that is crying out and telling us to come out from the rural way for us to walk on the path that God has set for our feet. This morning, we want to start a new. We want the Spirit of God to help us. We want to give ourselves back to God and the Father. We have no other God but you. The Bible says that the steadfast love of our God never ceases, that His mercy will never come to an end, that they are renewed every morning. Great is the faithfulness of our God. As we are walking up this morning, let us know that God has given us a new hope. He has given us everything we need to start a new day. Are we ready to accept what God has given to us? Or do we want to continue to turn our back against our God and just to do the things we want to do for ourselves without realizing that there is God whose eyes go through and through the universe looking for people who we acknowledge Him as God? People who are ready, who will be ready to do the righteous things, people who will be ready to live as God wants us to live in this world, and be ready to take this message of salvation to the nations that God has commanded each one of us to do. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Before we start the session this morning, we want to pray and call the Spirit of God, call on the Spirit of God to come in to help us in our story of the Acts of the Apostles. The Spirit is the one that instructs us. The Spirit is the one that enlightens our minds and opens our eyes to see the things that we need to take out of the Bible. It's the Spirit that corrects us where we go astray, bringing us back to where God wants us to be. Let us be attentive to the Spirit of God this morning and just give ourselves to the Spirit to help and to use us to do the will of God in the name of Jesus. Our Father, we give you thanks. We bless you for this morning which you have made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, for everything you have done for us. While we are yet asleep, Father Lord, you prepared everything that we need for this day. Father, we say thank you in the name of Jesus. We are woken up, Lord God Almighty, into the feast that you have invited us to partake in. And we know, Father Lord, that nothing will stand against your will in our lives. In Jesus' name. Father, as we come before you this morning, we repent of all our sins. We know that, Father Lord, there are ways that we have done things contrary to your will. In our, through our thoughts, so Lord God, through the words we uttered, and through our deeds. Jehovah God, we pray that the Spirit of God, that, that the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all our righteousness this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, we invite the Holy Spirit to come in to help us. Holy Spirit, take control of this session. Instruct us, enlighten our minds, and open our eyes to see the things that we take out of the passage this morning. In the name of Jesus, help us to our race as we go, running through this world, that in everything we do, we give pleasure to our God who created us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. But at this time, we want to remember everyone that has sinned against us in one way or the other, even those that we know and those that we do not know about. Wherever there is a grudge in us, Father God, we pray that you help us to forgive everyone that has sinned against us even as you are forgiving us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. You are our God. We have no other God as you. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If God has been good to you, testify about the goodness of God to the people around you. Let them know the God you have, the God that you serve, the God that created you, the God that created us all. Some people are in this world and they do not acknowledge God. They do not remember that they did not come to this world by their own effort, that it wasn't just their parents that brought them to this world, but God Almighty gave them to their parents. God created us all, so that in everything we do, we always give God pleasure in our actions, in our God, in our deeds, in our thoughts, even in, our, in everything, our interaction with our fellow human beings in this world. Let us remember that God wants us to show His love to the people around us in the name of Jesus. If we do not acknowledge God, then who do we acknowledge? God created us for his own purpose. We have no other God but him. So let us search within us, examine ourselves. If there are ways that we are falling short of the glory of God, let us ask him to have mercy on us. Our God is faithful to forgive us. He's not going to turn a sinner away. When we realize that we have sinned against God and we come to him, and we offer ourselves and ask for forgiveness, and God is able to forgive us in the name of Jesus. Actually, the Bible says that God stands at the door, that is knocking at the door. He's knocking. 
that if anyone hears the sound and opens that door, that he will come in and die, die with them. God is going about searching for the sinners, but stop functioning. And that's why he's sending us out, that go out to the nations, go and tell the people the truth. Tell them that I'm giving salvation to all men. And then there's no way through which they can come to me except through my son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God wants us all to come back to him. He loves us so much. He does not want any of us to die, perish, and leave this world without thinking about where we spend salvation, where we spend eternity. He has given us salvation freely. So let us think about what we are doing in this world and turn back to God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our God is able to help us. He that has called us, he that created us, will help us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are continuing with our reading of the Acts of the Apostles. And um, yesterday we talked about Acts chapter 21, from verse 1 to 16. We are continuing from verse 17 to the end of the chapter of chapter 21. Uh, I'm going to read it. Yesterday what we read was that Paul was compared by the Spirit of God to go to Jerusalem. That's why they found that uh, the believers persuaded him not to go. They tried to dissuade him from going to Jerusalem. But he decided to go because he knew that he had to go to Jerusalem. That there was no way that he could finish his race. What God had called him to do without going back to Jerusalem. And from that, we, we knew that Paul understood that Whatever was going to be falling in Jerusalem would not be pleasant, that it was going to pass through hardship. That he himself said that one thing he knew was that in wherever he went to, through all the cities he went to, that the spirit always warned him that there was prison and hardship facing him before him, wherever he went to. He knew that it was going to pass through hardship. He knew that his, he, his, there was a risk of being put in, he was facing the risk of being put in prison, just for that, that he was ready to go. And we also saw that the prophet Agatha put a uh, false belt and bothered his hands and feet and took Paul that, and said that which, uh, the person that has this belt, that's, that, that was what was going to happen to him in Jerusalem. That wasn't enough to discourage Paul. He said his life was worth nothing to him, that he had to go. It was time for him to leave. So now we are going to see, we are going to read what happened when he arrived at Jerusalem. How he was received and what happened to him. In Jesus' name, Amen. We pray that the Spirit of God will enlighten our minds, that we take something out of this passage today, that we can apply in our own life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Paul's arrival at Jerusalem. When we arrive at Jerusalem, the brothers receive us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James and all the elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard it, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are zealous for the Lord. They have, been in, they have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to sacrifice their children or live according to our custom. What shall we do? They will certainly, they will certainly hear that you have come. So do what to tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Say these men join in their purification rites and pay their and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everybody will know there is no truth in these reports about you, or that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. The next day, Paul took the men 
and purified, him, purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the dates when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. Paul arrested. When its seven days were nearly over, some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul at the temple. They stood up the old crowd and seized him, shouting, Men of Israel, help us! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against our people and our law and this place. And besides, he has brought bricks into the temple area and defied this holy place. They had previously seen Philip Philmos, the efficient in the city with Paul, and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple area. The whole city was aroused, and the people came running from all directions. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple, and immediately the gates were shut. While they were trying to kill him, news reached the commander of the Roman troops, that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd. When the rioters saw the commander, commander and his soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The commander came up and arrested him and ordered him to be gone with two chains. Then he asked, who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd shouted one thing and some another. And since the commander could not get at the truth because of the uproar, he ordered the poor to take it into the barracks. When Paul reached the steps, the violence of the mob was so great he had to be carried by the soldiers. The crowd that followed kept shouting. Away with him, Paul speaks to the crowd. As the soldiers were about to take Paul into the barracks, he asked the commander, May I say something to you? Do you speak Greek? He replied. Aren't you the Egyptian who started a revolt and led 4,000 terrorists out into the desert some time ago? Paul answered, I'm a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no ordinary city. Please let me speak to the people. Having received the commander's permission, Paul stood on the steps and motioned to the crowd. When they, all, when they were all silent, he said to them in Aramaic, in Aramaic, Brothers and fathers, listen now to my defense. We spoke yesterday, we'll read the defense tomorrow in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus, we'll read it tomorrow. I already read it. He told them how uh, he was converted. I met with Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus. He told them I, how serious he was that he took a letter from Jerusalem from the high priest and the elders. And he went to Damascus to persecute the Christians, the believers, to arrest them, to throw them in prison. But on his way, I met with Jesus Christ. I was converted. And how he was commissioned, I received the commission to take the gospel to the Gentile nations. We are going to read that tomorrow to see how the people reacted to Paul's testimony about what. The Lord Jesus Christ did create among the Gentiles. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. We thank God for His faithfulness. As the prophet Agathos and everyone who Paul, even Paul himself knew, because the Spirit of God already told him that in every town, in every city that he would go to, that he would face hardship and the, the prison was before him, was facing him. We, now we can say that when Paul came to Jerusalem, that the people were actually waiting for him. They've heard about what he did among the Gentiles. He was welcomed warmly by the believers. And they told him that this is the news. They told him the news that had come to the people. That he was teaching people 
not to obey the custom and to do things that are contrary to the law of Moses. And that the people they were waiting for him. And they told him that among them, four people had made a vow that he would purify himself among the people and pay their expenses and have his head, uh, they have their head shaved, shaven. And they did that. Then Paul now went, according to their custom, he went to the temple to announce when the days of the purification will end. When he went there and the Jews who were waiting for him, they saw him come to the temple and they seized him. They seized him and they told the other people that men, let us say from verse 28, then they stirred up the old crowd and seized him, shouting, Men of Israel, Echos, this is the man who teaches all men everywhere against our people and our law and this place. And besides, he has brought bricks into the temple area and defied this holy place. They had previously seen Paul with a Greek called Kyrgyz Mots, and they assumed that he was the team that he, that he brought the, he brought the man into the temple. So they seized him and they told the other people, stir the people up against him that this was this was the man you've been hearing about, the man that went around telling people not to obey the law of Moses and not to be circumcised and the one preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ going around testifying about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and that salvation uh, uh, salvation of our souls will only be through our Lord Jesus Christ that there was no other way through which men we go to God accepting through Jesus Christ so they pointed and asking that this was the person they were waiting for and they took him and there was an uproar. The people, some of the people there, just as it is when people are protesting against something, some will not even understand what the issue is about. But they will just join the mob because they see there's a protest. People love confusion. It gives some people the avenue to commit crime. So they just join because the act of man, as the Bible says, is very wicked, very evil. They join and they took Paul and they brought him into the temple. And the commander of the soldiers, the head of the troop, the Roman troop, heard about it that there was an uproar in Jerusalem. Then he came and he took uh, Paul, bound him in two chains. He did not know who Paul was and he asked them, Who is this man? What did he do? He wanted to find out for the people what it was. Paul wasn't. Afraid of the crowd. That's why the fact that they beat him, that they had, the soldiers had to carry him because of the, the crowd. They were coming and they were beating him and everything. They had to carry him away from the people as they went up the stage. Paul was not afraid of the crowd. He still wanted to say something. He still wanted to defend himself. And he told the commander that he wanted to say something. And he was given the opportunity to defend himself. And that's what we are going to read about in chapter 22. That the spirit that God has given to us, the spirit that God gave to Paul, the spirit of God that was in him, was not afraid of the mob. He was not, was not afraid of the accusation that he brought against him. That that spirit of God will speak for him. We will defend what God had given to him. Because this crowd that has come against him will need to hear about the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will need to know about the truth. So Paul was ready to testify, to defend himself before, before the crowd that was out to kill him. Let us know that God Almighty, who sends his children out, gives them everything they need. He said that when you're brought before cancer, when they want to try you, you should not be afraid because the word you speak will come out. That will give you the utterance. All we have to go is to, all we have to do is to go out, to obey God, go out and do what God wants us to do. If there's persecution outside there, God will take care of you. If we have to give, defend what we believe in, the Spirit will give us the utterance at the appropriate time. To stand boldly before the crowd without being afraid 
to say what we know because we believe it's the truth. We believe it's the word of God that has brought light into the world. The word of God that gives men salvation. We believe that it's the word of God that can deliver us from the kingdom of darkness. We believe that there's power in that word and that it's the truth. That there's no matter what it is outside there, that word has to go out. And we thank God that even in this day, there are still people outside there in this world that have taken this world seriously. They've gone out to the nations and they, they are not afraid of whatever they will pass through. But they are zealous for our God. They are doing the work of God. Some are in, in, in prisons that we are not aware of in some parts of the, of the world because they've gone out to do what God has called them to do. Those of us who have not gone out, what can we do to ensure that this word goes out? We can pray. There are people in prison, as I said, in countries that we don't know, we do not know about. People are faithfully taking this word out. And the world has come against them. Because the world does not want this word to be preached to the nations. They do not want the people to know the truth about God's plan, what God has already done for us. That God has already given us salvation. They want men to remain in darkness and to suffer under the bondage that the enemy has placed some souls. So let us pray for these men, these faithful ones, men and women that have gone out, that God will come to empower them, to give them the spirit of boldness, and they will continue to do what God has called them to do in the name of Jesus. Our God is good. Paul did not throw him from the trial that was going to face him. He saw it as an, as an opportunity for him to complete the work that God had entrusted to him. He saw it as an opportunity for him to testify before his own people. He belonged to this sect. He was one of them. They knew him. They saw him as one that, be uh, that betrayed them, one that left. And now he went around preaching the gospel of salvation, testifying about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the salvation of Jesus Christ to the nations. He preached to so many Greeks. He preached to Jews. He preached to the Gentile nations, to everyone that the Spirit enabled him to preach to. He taught the people that knew only about the baptism of, of John that there was another baptism of the Holy Spirit. He told them about the salvation of Jesus Christ and he gave them the knowledge they needed as new believers, the knowledge that they needed to grow spiritually, to prepare them also to go out to be disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, to preach the word to their friends, to their families and the people around them. We thank God for his faithfulness. For, for the work he did through Apostle Paul. One that originally fought against the will of God. That when he met Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus, he knew at once that he was meeting with Jesus Christ. And as soon as he passed through that experience with Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God turned him around to be a vessel of honor, somebody that the Spirit will use to do the will of God here on earth. That's what God himself can do. He can turn the sinner to become somebody that he can use to be a vessel of honor. For the sinner must listen to what the Spirit is saying, turn around from the reward way and come back to God in the name of Jesus. Come back to God. God can use any one of us. We must be ready to give ourselves to God. We cannot run away from God because of our sins. There is so much to be done for the kingdom. And God is waiting. The Spirit is speaking to us at this time. That we should turn back. That we should seek the God that created us. That some of us have gone astray. Some of us are still allowing the enemy to use us because we surrounded our members to the wicked one to you. That because God has given us a free will to make choices in this world between what is good and what is right, does not mean that we forget the God that created us. 
does not mean that we forget the purpose for which God created us. Does not mean that we ignore the very important decision that we have to make about our life. Where we spend eternity. Do we want to spend eternity in God's kingdom to enjoy all the good things that God has promised us, or do we want to be with Satan and to be condemned forever to suffer in that pleasant fire that the enemy will be forever and ever in the name of Jesus? The choice is for, for us to make. It has to make. No one is going to force us. God is not going to force us. He has given us his word. No one is living in ignorance at this time because the word has gone out to the entire nations. We have to make a decision of what we want in the name of Jesus. And once we decide that we want to work with God, that we have accepted the service of our Lord Jesus Christ, then we should be very happy to go out to testify about the goodness of God because we have tested and seen the goodness of God. We've seen the power of God at work in our lives. We've seen what God has done for us. We have received the revelation of the will of God concerning our souls, concerning what He wants to do through us. And anyone that will believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, that should give us so much joy to go out to tell people the truth about the gospel of salvation. Just as we saw, as we read this book, of the, the chapters we have read in the book of uh, the Acts of the Apostles, that the people who heard it, they went out to tell people about it. The centurion brought everyone that he knew as he waited for Paul to come to tell him about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What are we doing? Do we care about the souls around us? Are we telling people about the gospel of salvation? Are we passionate about this, what the God has called us to do? Do we know that the souls of men that have not heard about this gospel of salvation, the souls of men that have left the faith because of discouragement, that Satan is holding those souls in bondage and they need to be released from the grip of the enemy. They need to be brought back to the light. What can we do for our God? That's the question we ask ourselves. After doing everything we have done in this world, and to stand before the judgment seat of our God, what else do we have to give except our service for our God? That's what we justify us. Salvation already we have received. Salvation. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. However, God wants us to do good works, to add good works to our faith. So when we stand before him, he said, whatever you do to the least of my brothers, that's what you do unto me. That when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me water to drink. When I was naked, you gave me clothes to wear. When I was in prison, you visited me. That welcome into my kingdom. That whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that's what you do unto me. So are we serving God? Is it too much for us to tell people about the goodness of God? To testify to them about the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ? To tell them what God has done for us? To bring them back to God? To make them to realize that in this world that we are in, that the forces of darkness are right here. And they are fighting against the will of God trying to smite souls from the kingdom of God. That evil amongst us, as the Bible says, that they have come in amongst us. They are there. That man, that we should be uh, awake. We should always be conscious of what we are doing. We should be mindful of the devices of the wicked. We should remember the God that created us. And in everything, we should give God pleasure through the things we do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank God for bringing us to the end of this session. We thank God for giving us this word. For showing us how the apostles lived. What they did. That these were men that knew that the word that was entrusted to them was the truth. And they were determined within them 
to take the world to the entire nations. May God put that kind of spirit in us that no matter what we pass through in this world, that all we want to do will be to give our God pleasure, to take the command to the nations, to love our brothers and sisters as God has commanded us to love the people around us, and to do the will of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. At this time, we are going to pray, and we are going to thank God for everything he has done for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, we give you thanks to bless you for being our God. We thank you, God, for everything you have done for us, for the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For calling, for making us to be your children, O Lord God, that despite the fact that we sinned against you and we strayed away from you, that your love, O Lord God, for us was such that you brought us back, even when we had sinners. Thank you, God, for loving us the way you do. Thank you for providing all our needs. For we know that everything we have in this world came from you. Father, I receive all the praise in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the life of the Apostle Paul. We thank you for what you did through the early believers, God. That they did not give up, they held on to the truth you entrusted to them. Father, as you study the lives of these great men and women of faith, we pray, O Lord God Almighty, that we also we take something from their life, O Lord God, from their lives, O Lord God, that we can apply in our own life here on earth. We pray, Lord God, that we will be faithful to the end. Help us, O Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your spirit that you have given to us. Thank you, God, for everything you have done for us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. If God has been good to you, testify about the goodness of God to the people around you. Tell them what God has done for you and ensure that they understand that everything you have comes from God. That without God, your life is worthless. Sing a new song about the goodness of God to the people around you all the time. Let them see God in you. Let them see the light of God in you and the love of God flowing through you to each one around you. And they will be drawn to you in the name of Jesus. And our Father in heaven will be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Remember that God loves you. He loves you too. God bless you.